It is I, your humble host, fellow monkey, chronicler of legend. And with this legend, we return to the paradise island of Themyscira. Yes, the extended road of distinguished champions has already introduced the Wonder Woman to our sight. And now we shall discover who she is and how she came to be. Released in 2017, Wonder Woman retells the origin of Diana, Princess of Themyscira. It is a time of war, and one Amazon cannot stand by as the world of men threatens to encroach upon the hidden paradise of Themyscira. Yet, in her journey to war, she will receive a cold awakening to the true nature of humanity. Now, behold she herself! The Princess of Themyscira, the weapon of the Olympian deities, the secret of the war to end all wars, I present you the legend of the Wonder Woman. There is a little girl upon the paradise island of Themyscira, home of the Amazons, and she craves battle. Her mother, however, is rather disinclined. For you see, dear viewer, before the legend of the Wonder Woman comes the legend of the Amazons. For it is the case that in this version of Greek mythology, it was Zeus, not Prometheus, that created mankind. And he also created the Amazons to protect them. However, Ares, son of Zeus, god of war, saw only ill in the creations of his father, and when no other god would believe in the ill of man, Ares slew them all until only Zeus remained. Thus in that final battle, father smote son with a mighty blow, realising that his time was near, Zeus entrusted to the Amazons a weapon, a god killer, to be used in the event that Ares should ever rear his head again. Time, however, is fleeting, and the last child of Themyscira is trained in the arts of war. <laughs> Powerful indeed are the bracers of the princess. Fortunate indeed this is, when a soldier enters from the world of man. And modern warfare follows with him. And while Amazon warfare does manage to keep up, there are always casualties. So falls General Antiope, spearhead of the Amazons. Dear viewers one and all, a toast! To General Antiope. Thus, Stephen Trevor must endure the lasso of Hestia and reveals the truth of his mission. For you see, dear viewer, General Eric Ludendorff seeks victory in this, the Great War. To this end, he has employed the services of Dr. Isabel Maru and at an installation in the Ottoman Empire, Captain Trevor, against his orders not to intervene, retrieves the notebook of Dr. Maru, hijacks an aeroplane with which to escape, and finds himself in Themyscirian airspace. And the rest we already know. The tales of war inspire Diana, Princess of Themyscira, into action. Though it will separate Diana from paradise evermore. Thus do our improbable pair reach London and the chambers of power. It is at this point that we meet Sir Patrick Morgan, who is more than he appears. And yet, the chambers of power are mired in fruitless and circular discussion. 
For is it not the case that the soldier of fortune is the true hero? So it is then that with our team assembled, we reach the front lines. And while no man can cross the open battlefield, perchance a wonder woman could. Thus is liberated the town of Veld in the great nation of Belgium. And a very important daguerreotype is taken. And it was this very daguerreotype that was stolen by Alexander Luthor Jr., which led Diana to a charity ball at his metropolis home. And it was this chance encounter that led to the device of Bruce Wayne, and the meetings with Bruce Wayne, and the involvement of Diana, Princess of Themyscira, in the battle with Doomsday. Although the events that follow are a legend that is yet to be told. And it is upon the very next day that Diana would seek to make a terrible mistake. But for the intervention of Captain Trevor. For it is the belief of Diana that General Eric Ludendorff is in fact Ares, son of Zeus, god of war. This is not the case, however, as this disguise would be far too obvious. However, there can be no intervention for the village of Veld. Such is the power of this helium-based mustard gas. This, then, is the weapon that Dr. Maru developed, and that General Ludendorff will use to bring victory to the German forces. So it is then that we follow Diana, as she makes her first mistake. And at last, the true villain is revealed. Yes, indeed. Ares. God of War, son of Zeus, took the form of Sir Patrick Morgan. And of course, what better disguise for a God of War than to pretend to be a man of peace? Ares seeks to convince our heroine to join his crusade, which goes as one would expect. And so it is that Stephen Trevor makes a supreme sacrifice to destroy a terrible weapon. Dear viewers, one and all, come bow your heads in a moment of remembrance for Captain Steve Trevor. And the Wonder Woman puts an end to the God of War. Though as one war ends, the ashes of another are revealed. A war that is the basis for a legend yet to be told. Such then is the legend of the Wonder Woman. And I deem this legend worthy of remembrance. This is The Milestone, the first live-action Wonder Woman movie. The tale of a princess of Themyscira and an ace pilot and his ragtag band of misfits in World War I. And honestly, it's so watchable that I got lost in it. Director Patty Jenkins takes a script co-written by Zack Snyder and takes it to a place where it needs to be. It's one movie but it's so many things at once, in the best way. It's a superhero origin, it's a war movie set in World War I, it's a story of love and combat and brotherhood and sisterhood, it's not just empty spectacle. To be honest, it's an ensemble picture, and the chemistry of the main foursome feels so natural, as Trevor's Irregulars, Saeed Tamawi's Sammy, Ewan Bremner's lovable sniper Charlie, Eugene Brave Rock's stoic chief, and that's before we even get to Chris Pine, who plays a quick-witted Steve Trevor, and Indiana Jones for the Great War Era. And of course, the lady herself, Gal Gadot, who is something of a naive in this movie, setting out into the world for the first time, 
filled with hope and determination and so heartbroken to think that there might be evil in all of our hearts. And we have to mention Robin Wright's General Antiope, somehow still showing femininity even as a matchless warrior. And this movie flows like a river from beginning to middle to end, even though it's all a flashback bookended with two scenes set in present day Europe, and Jenkins even managed to avoid the trap of originitis, managing to set everything up and still move the emotional arc forward, weaving the arrival of Steve Trevor and the problem of taking him off Themyscira into the story organically, seamlessly. There is one flaw though, good as the story is, it's narratively slight. And while the action scenes are set up well and executed well, punch the air joyous moments, at least in my opinion, are few and far between. And if you don't like the idea of warrior women, you're going to hate the first half hour. But then, why would anyone who doesn't like the idea of warrior Amazons subject themselves to a Wonder Woman movie? In summary, if you only watch one DCEU movie, make it this one. What it lacks in overarching narrative, it makes up for in character, heart, and a truly memorable sacrifice. Roll on the sequel. And with these words, I direct you to that greatest of sights, the subscription button, and its courageous cohort, the notification bell icon. And that you would be my hero. Consult the sacred texts below, and chart a path to my financial salvation. Or in your language, crowdfunding. Now when next we meet... Hold on, the next one's the finale, isn't it? Indeed it is, Master Funky Monkey. I'm thinking that it should be me in the chair for it. Are you now? Was I not summoned for this exact purpose? Well, yeah, and I wouldn't do it without you, but... Hmm, perchance it would be best if we discussed this at the ending of this episode. To which end, dear viewers one and all, I remain your humble host, fellow monkey, chronicler of legend. And I bid you, one and all, good day. Possibly a few friends. friends.